So I want to talk a little bit about the implications when you're actually doing digital sampling. And I love seeing conversations where people talk about a continuous to digital converter, so sort of a simple block, there's an X of T, there's some sample signal, it's going to be sampled uh, based around, you know, in time, around a fundamental period. This is great. And it's just like, yes, this is done and there's no problem. I think, unfortunately, there's a lot more to this problem. And so I'd like to roll out what's sort of sitting in one of these structures. Uh, and we could have a similar questions for the digital to continuous versions as well. But if you look at it, it's going to require starting with a continuous signal, continuous time, continuous amplitude, often an analog voltage, could be an analog current, could be a couple other things depending on how you're transducing it. Fair enough. And then what you're going to do is you're going to first go through a sampler. This is typically going to be a sample and hold circuit to actually be able to hold that value at every particular time step. Well, in practice, this typically tends to be a switch that you, you know, you either then you sort of dynamically store something on a capacitor, so you put charge there, you kind of release it, you, and it should be a nice ideal structure, a nice ideal buffer with a gain of one, and that gives you at least a, con a continuous valued signal that has discrete time steps in it. And sometimes that may be where you're going to work with things, but typically that's not the full system. After that, you're going to typically take that discrete time continuous amplitude signal and then do an, what is called an analog to digital converter, which effectively means I'm doing a quantization. It means I take the input and then I'm basically looking at a whole bunch of comparison levels and then going and getting my value out. And you say, that's great. These are things we buy, no problem. We, this is not an issue. Except there are some error, there's some questions here. So we say this is a perfect switch, it's a perfect buffer, everything there. But the reality is there's a whole bunch of issues with that. Like how precise is this clock? How ideal is the sampling? Is there any errors in the switch? Trust me, there are issues in all of those issues. Make sure this buffer is ideal, and so on. This right off the bat would limit what your signal to noise ratio and your linearity of your input signal is. Just straight up right off the beginning. Um, now granted I'll be able to sample it, it'll be a nice sample signal, but that'll work. But that's still not sufficient because then I have to typically do an analog to digital conversion through this quantizer, which means that I've got a lot of comparators and references. Well you better hope all those comparators and references are perfect. And they're not. And so that's going to be there. Now we typically just assume this is there and we're like, no, not exactly. You'll typically get a converter that'll say it's m-bit resolution. And the thing you have to understand is that in most cases, that's the highest precision, the highest linearity in signal to noise ratio. Signal to noise ratio is a signal to the noise. And in this case, the noise is also the errors created in this process. Linearity is exactly how linear, because we'd want everything to have sort of a perfect one-to-one -one map a linear map and it may not be. And so although you think that everything should be in good shape, to do that is, it creates a whole bunch of complexity. And here's something else. If I want to get to one more bit of linearity, typically my cost is a factor of two, at least. So every bit will cost me significantly. And so realize that that's actually a fairly costly process. People are very good at it because people put a lot of time and energy. It's amazing what people do. The same thing when you talk about this digital to continuous version, which is a digital to analog converter and then a low pass filter. People do amazing jobs. They put a huge amount of work. Um, you know, there's whole design teams just to build one device. And then that device gets used quite a bit. But it's important to understand where the limits and the constraints are in these systems.